again, this is K.O. Brickbot, and this is Tobot V Season 3, Number 3, Jet Thunder. The box is the exact same style as the other boxes, with a dark orange accent. It's not quite red, but it's not very light orange like the toy, but anyway. Those are the main CG photos. Number 3, Tobot V Season 3, Jet Thunder. This is the widest box, because jets are big. Looks like this texture was just stretched out rather than expanded upon. Back of the box, that same background. Jet mode, tow key plug-in, robot mode with swords, the side portrait. Again, it's February, February, March. Review. So this is a big gray toy plane, a gray plane with orange accents, and a very long wingspan. It's also the obligatory aircraft of every Tobot V season. First there was the shuttle, and, and then Cyclone Hawk, the jet plane thing, and then this is a earthly military plane. I guess the paneling detailings. That does sell it. It has several rivets in it, several rivets and bolts on it. Rivets all around the wings and on the side here. Looks like reinforced plating. Also, even on these turbines, the logo. Also, here for uh, the other mode. On the wing, Tobot VKR. Nothing on this side. This is also raised, yeah, this is raised table graph. But not just any old plane, you may have already noted it resembles the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II Warthog. The signature features of that aircraft are the twin turbines on the back, the H-fins, of course the long wingspan, and the distinct shape of the front cockpit, at least half of it on this one. And of course, that machine gun. Although this one's looking a little stubby, and just looks like a circle. Would have been nice if this could extend. But there's something off about this being a fictionally realistic A-10 Thunderbolt. By no means I'm an aircraft expert. I'm not even an automobile expert. I just like the exterior of the cars and the model and shapes. Not sure about the inner workings. Just like, I just, just like the models of cars and if you turn them into characters. But I did some like Googling research to see how this Jet Thunder compares to a real A-10 Thunderbolt. First off, the wings are off, they're way off, they're in the wrong position, they are too high up and they are too forward to the fuselage. The real A-10 actually had the wings straight in the middle and on the lower end of the aircraft, there was more fuselage above the wings than under it. I guess this is the typical airplane wing configuration, but not an A-10 Thunderbolt. So that's the biggest inaccuracy. Even that most famous A-10 Thunderbolt Transformer, even if some of his toy wings weren't in the most accurate position, they were at least right in the middle of the fuselage. Well, yeah, they're like this because they have to form the robot shoulders and they have to move forward on slider rails. These are really big hollow slider rails. I can guess they are right in the middle of an A-10 Thunderbolt because it has to balance out the giant machine gun that takes up the front of the fuselage. I think it might have some tipping balancing if that was in real life, if there was a real gun inside of this slightly wing lopsided jet thunder bolt. Yeah, it, it, this is just as far as it can slide back. Just as far as it can keep it in this torso area. I guess the other engineering option could be just like a beam, just like a hinged beam that could Hinge this over to so that it is a more accurate position. But then those will be on the legs. And then they'll have to transform over to the shoulders, and which will be parts forming, which the kids might break. So yeah, this is more secure. Yeah, of course, of course it's gonna be a better toy than a better A10 replica. And secondly, these turbines, these side engines, they're too low. I mean, you can't see the turbines from this angle. Are these supposed to be extra fictional intakes to compensate for these with thing it can't really get any wind in there? And also, why does it have two turbines? There's a big one and a little one. I think I guess it just 
for style points, but I'm not sure how practical that's gonna be. But then you come to the back and there's things in the turbines. There's something was jammed in these vent turbines. But then you have these things stuck in them. It looks like something was jammed into them. Yeah, these are supposed to be the accessory storage for robot mode, but it... Because of how it's supposed to fold out like this and because of how big the hinge is, it just it leaves a big gap. It's not symmetrical. The OCD is just bugging me. It's just not symmetrical. It was smacking the symmetrical here that, that, that would have looked nice. I guess they sort of compensated with just intentionally making this titanium dark piece part of the design. Just having a little bleed over to the side and a little arrow there molded in there. And number three. Number three printed on there and raised. But that's another nitpick, you know, just making the vehicle mode slightly ugly. So from what I've watched, these turbines are designed and placed in such a way so that this aircraft can fly if one of these engines are downed and the position of the fins and the wings helps mask its infrared heat signature. But then you have two big giant rocket boosters on the back. Right besides the engines, just two big sci-fi rocket boosters. Just the simple logic of rocket booster makes it go whoosh. I don't know about you, but having just cartoony fire, fire thrust, just fire thrust over this section of the tail. That's not a very good design for longevity. I guess they're there to compensate for these engines that might not actually work because there's swords jammed in them. Also, minus points for having one fully painted inner red rim, but a sloppily painted rim on the other side. It's hardly painted. I mean, that is quite a stark contrast of paint and unpaint. I mean, is it supposed to be completely red or not red on the inner rim? Underside gibble. It's pretty clean. It's a pretty clean underside. Yeah, the body and the legs is all forms the entire fuselage. Just has the arms visibly sticking out there. Yeah, at least they're not forward-facing unless you want them to. And yeah, they're pretty waffled underside. But I guess it's stylistically waffled. As with these insides of the fins here. Yeah, just like four layers of waffling. So I guess that's designed, I guess intentionally designed hollowness. The ratchets on the arms, they do hold it, but at the same time it's easily movable. So I suppose you could use this to simulate the airplane's lift. And then going down, ascending and descending. Since this doesn't have separate ailerons or flaps. Also, I'm not sure if it's a good idea to have the tow key just on one wing, which might make the aircraft tilt if this was to ever fly. Also, all the details are on this side. I mean, yeah, the tail tampograph here, the tiny little V logo here, the V logo on the wing. Nothing on this side except the number three. Also, this is the screw hole side. It does have landing gear. Of course, non-rolling landing gear, but in two different colors, orange on the front and gunmetal on the black. Gunmetal on the back. But there's also these big triangular fins that I think just basically serve the weight because these are on the ratchet, shoulder ratchet, so I guess these are there to reinforce it. Also, might the back might be a little back heavy, so... If these were not here, I guess it would just have to rest on, on this, which would just make it all flop. So... Non-retractable landing gear, which is half accurate to the actual A-10. I guess some might argue amongst all the other colorful Tobot toys, this looks a little giraffe compared to the rest of them because it's gray. It's gray with a little bit of orange. And this, this particular type of yellowish gray. And it's not quite the, it doesn't pop as silver, even, even if silver is a little drab, it still looks more dynamic. It, looks, it still looks more visually striking, silver. But you know, gray is what the A-10 Thunderbolt was, and there, I guess there's most aircrafts are gray or white. Maybe a few of the Technicolor ones are just for more specialty purposes, I'm guessing. I'm not sure if better colors would have helped. I mean, I think the gray is okay, but maybe this could have been a better shade of gray. Semi-realistic colors for an aircraft, so I don't really mind the colors that much, to be honest. So, as a A-10 Thunderbolt Transformer that also turns into a robot, it's not the most accurate thing. Not sure if Universe Power Glide is any better. 
that thing has smaller wings. But just as a toy plane for kids to swoosh around, it doesn't function. It's a robot airplane, robot jet plane. Yeah, but this is not a scale model of an A10. Don't go buying this expecting to make it a scale model display. Just like, just a toy display. Jet Thunder's length and wingspan makes him the biggest of his teammates in vehicle mode. But it's still a small plane compared to normal sized cars, as is the case. But would this be a realistically big plane compared to the normal scale of cars? Maybe. V transformation. So first take this toe key off either by the tip of the key or these little finger cutouts. And then just push it in this key slot here. There's no twisting. Which should unlatch it. Although this is the weakest latch. Because it's not really a clip, it's just kind of just frictions in there, and this button just kind of pushes down on it, pushes down a little slope here. Yeah, so yeah, if you, if you tr shake it like this, this is going to come off easy without the key, so... You just going to have to hold it from the back. Just be mindful of that. Th th this is the loosest connection, but it's not super loose. It's not annoyingly loose. So I guess... I guess gravity lets it partially transform. Then turn the waist around. Flip the tail behind and clip them onto these transparent clips. Transparent clips that young toy can afford to have really strong transparent clear plastic clips. Then collapse those fins in and then turn these around. Side split. Obligatory girwalk mode. The wing comes in two halves, so just split them over, split them at an angle, fold the arms down. This is a pretty stylistic way to deal with the wings. Oh no, slider rails all get loose over time! Well, you, fortunately, uh, these are not just relying on friction, they're actually just spring-loaded locks in there. And there are little nubs in there, so those springs get unlatched and get friction into place and they click in right in so slider rails with reinforced locking bits are okay the thing is that I guess just most toys don't have those luxury of those kind of locking joints and slider rails so slider rails and small toys tend to wear out and then press the blue cockpit which springs out the head very echoey very resonating spring sound and for the finishing touch, plug the toe key into this convenient cutout here. On top of the cutout here, so it's a double cutout. Oh no, the glue on this thing wore off! Yeah, so you know how these toe keys are assembled now. It's, it's just metal cased in two pieces of plastic glued together. It's too thin for screws, but that's glue. The edges hold it together just fine, but so, so yeah, at this stage, just, I have to press this in the center. And it comes off pretty fine without having to, without letting that thing pop off, so. That's a slight QC issue for a very good young toy for ya. But if you're too lazy to relocate the toe key, I guess you could also just leave it as it is. Just upside down key on the shoulder. So it's the plane that takes the shape of a robot. And a pretty straightforward robot configuration of the front of the vehicle forming the chest. And the lower section of the vehicle forming the legs. Oh yeah, all of these toe bots have a front chest style. The most visually interesting part of Jet Thunder is his wings, how they split into two. Like, sh revealing some black painted vents here, and screw holes. You get to get, and it gets it formed a slight axe shape. I suppose they serve as shields. Because rather than, yeah, you know, they could have easily just made this one whole piece and just put it whatever, wherever, like a back, even a backpack, but 
This is visually interesting. Flight departure. It's great what they did with the wings. The legs are made from the back, and I guess that's why they wanted to have big, impractical rocket thrusters so that they form the feet and give him robot mode flight. Well, I don't know, the hollow spaces right here could have just been imaginary jet thrusters. These could have been emitted and could have been, there could have been just regular sized feet, but hey, rocket boosters are more fun to look at. They're more fun, right? And the turbines, they also form the pre-molded A stance right on the bottom, not in the middle. Although the kibble, yeah, there's a lot of the tail fin kibble on the, just hanging out on the back there. Only two points of collapsing, no further panels to fold it up a bit more, so it kind of sticks out, but at the same time, since it's gray, it doesn't really stand out that much. His leg detailings might not be as detailed as the other Tobots, like the insides are completely plain, unlike... Or even unlike this. But at least the sides are also decorated, like with these, what looks like raised buttons, but yeah, they're just more leg details, and there's the Air Force style symbols on his side, small ones vertically upward, and a three. And just simple indents in here that kind of look like arrows, not much other than curves. And some ridiculously short thighs and ridiculously long legs. The waist area, there's not much in the waist, just just a connector piece that holds the waist and the rest of the body together. Although it's interesting how this very thick and orange landing gear wheel just is intentionally formed into the torso. And it lines up with these seemingly redundant wheels in the vehicle mode, so... Not sure that's gonna have been a better way to hide that, but at least it's incorporated into the robot. The head forms part of the vehicle mode. It's a pretty long one with the side ear pieces and a big fin on top. Like aeronautic fin type. Transparent goggles over those big blue eyes that's hard to see there. And a big frown, a big lip puckering scowl. And a black chin guard. Actually, it looks a little bit lopsided, so it was like a frowning pucker lip smirk. Those vents form the shoulders and those are some really short arms. With some pretty simple lower arms, like the, just the painted stripe here and the white fins. These off-white fins that form some aerial themes. And some simple hydraulic detailing there. Hollow top in the back, of course. And his other secondary gimmick. He has swords in his turbine scabbards. Yeah, just soft click them out at four clicks and their swords. In these way bigger than 5 millimeter hexagonal holes. That's a good slashing reach. Yep, it's an aerial bot. That's a swordsman. Just slashing in the sky. I guess that's good for taking out sky pirates close and personal. And also have some range attacks. Though it's a crime he doesn't use that big gun right in the middle of his chest. I mean, just from the show, it's just super robot attacks of magical energy projectiles all around. It's a crime. I don't know, well, maybe it might be because it might be a little too realistic, but not even rapid fire lasers. Backside is nothing to write home about. I mean, it's acceptably hollow. Just a little ho bit of hollowness here and uh, this much of plain kibble sticking out from the back. It's not too big. And there's a the land gear right there. It's just hanging out from the, on the back of his shoulders. Hard to see from the front, but they're there. When you swing the board, you have these things sticking out. Would have been nice if they could have at least rotated 180. So that they got out of the way. But yeah, we just have extra landing gear here. This was incorporated in, but not these. At least they're good handles. Articulation. Head is on a slight up and down tilt. As you can see the screw hole there, but uh, no side to side. Could they really not have put an actual proper head swivel in that lever system that this pushing cockpit thing has going? Just the front end 
that has a hinge and the back end is just on a little slider. They could have not incorporated a mushroom swivel on the top portion. The shoulders go all the way out, thanks to the shoulder points mounted on the top there. It also flows fairly well with the design, except for the unpainted red. Yeah, so those are some really good arms, and even an extra arm joint because of how the arms transform. 90 degree elbows, front and back. You definitely cannot expect bicep swivels on forearms these short. Nothing at the wrist. Shoulders that have really resident ratchets. I guess you can slide these rails back for a punching action. Very short punching action, more like the wing jabbing action. Or off point sword stabbing action. Transformational waist swivel, so I, I guess that does kind of compensate for the lack of head swivel. Just turn the whole body around. Legs forward that much. All the way forward and all the way back. Full spreads, no thigh swivels. And the most obtuse knees. Three clicks, but they are very obtuse. No further cutouts whatsoever. And nothing at the foot. This, this, just, this big one rocket booster is just one solid piece. Yes, he, he has a really good upper articulation. Really good articulate arms. Without the bicep swivels. With the lack of a head and the lack of the legs might be a bit of a turnoff. Yeah, but at least at least the arms are good. As awkward as it can get. But those lack of intermediate joints don't exactly make this a good sword posing robot. Other than just straightforward slashing, there's it this this is the best sword slashing you can do other than straightforward. Thematic size comparisons? I don't have any leader class jets, and I don't really want to get a universe power glide just to compare with Jet Thunder, so... He's the same old leader size, and the same height as the rest of his teammates. Yeah, so that's the third one of the main trio. I wouldn't say this is a bad Tobot toy, it's just a, another average Tobot toy. He just has enough articulation points to transform and do some basic things. And I really do like the arm articulation for a robot that's an airplane, that's a big plane that has big plane kibble. It has really good arm articulation, but not much else. But apart from his swordmanship and his passing resemblance to iconic aircraft, I think this is just pretty average. I think pretty average in functionality and what it is and its colors. There's a whole platoon of airplane transformers. There's just a lot of airplane transformers to choose from over Jet Thunder. And Jet Thunder is one of the most basic robot names possible. Jet and Thunder. Very basic. So if you just want to complete the trio, I mean for completionist's sake it's fine, but I think if someone just collecting these Tobots just for their merits as a toy, I think this is the least interesting of this trio. You could like airplane Tobots, but I think yeah, this is this is gonna be the lowest priority. They're all fine, but I guess there's just different appeals. For 